everyone. Welcome to my vlog series called What's on My Sewing Table. I hope you find it entertaining and maybe a little educational as you're going to get to see a little bit about what's behind the scenes and producing things like my Babbling Brook course that is available inside of my school that is online at create.clairerowley.com. If you haven't been there yet, be sure to join. The school is free and inside of there are courses and mini classes and groups where you can meet other people with the same interests that you have. This is what's been going on with me. For the last four months, I have been filming different segments of my Babbling Brook course, which is this inking and quilting project that you see here. And it feels as though I've been wearing a uniform because every time I filmed, I've been wearing the same outfit. And why? So that there's continuity in the actual filming process. So when you come in and you take the course, no matter how many years it's been since I filmed it, it will seem as though every single one of the videos I filmed was filmed at the same time. But in truth, what has happened since I filmed that, I've been to several different sewing shows. I've traveled to several different states. We had a product line that was out of stock arrive and we've had, and I have had to put on many different hats. I had to wear the, the slitting of the stick and tear stabilizer hat and then the rolling of it into smaller rolls the shrink wrapping and packaging and shipping and so this kind of invaded into my schedule and made it more challenging than it will be for future classes as I won't be traveling as much and I'll be able to create courses in a shorter amount of time thus producing more classes for you to enjoy so let's get on with it what is on my sewing table this is my table in its current state Today's project that I'm going to be filming is teaching you how to make a backing and a binding fabric using the same inks that I have tested and used to teach the Babbling Brick course, which this is my fabric. And in between then and there, I had somebody call me up asking about finishing fine fabrics. Know that you can use this as a temporary stabilizer on fabrics like chiffon and so if you have a dress that you need to hem, you can form it using the satin edge foot over fishing line and then pull the fishing line out. I like 20 pound fishing line for this. These are the ink troughs that we use to mix colors during the inking process. This is the brand of inks that I found to be the most beneficial for the actual class as they are the most forgiving and they're also extremely affordable and found at creativefeet.com. Part of the class was that a pattern that is broken down into different segments to help new, even new to art people to be able to do this type of artwork. One of the things I found challenging when I made this was getting a binding that didn't conflict with the artwork on the actual project. So I've decided to actually make my own binding and my own back fabric because look at what I used for this. Oh, yellow. For shame, for shame. Luckily, no one's looking at the back side. I covered different brushes and we actually did come out with our own line of brushes and the inks and the brushes are available in kits at Creative Feet under supplies and you'll find it in class supplies. So if you're interested in joining in for the Babbling Brook course, be sure to go to create.clairerowley.com to sign up. And let's see, I, my trusty magnetic pin cushion. I like having these little rulers in addition to large ones for squaring things off. Can't really remember what came about in the middle of filming that made me pull these tools out, but this is an old pair of scissors dating back, I believe, 31 years. Still good and usable. And then... My friction pen for tracing, Sharpie pens. Let's see, what else do I got? Oh, of course, my liquid base basting glue. There's rarely a day when I don't use that. And that is one of our products, a water soluble stabilizer in a bottle. And then painter's tape, as painter's tape was used in preparing my beautiful cutter pillar glow light tablet that was also used during the inking process. And the glass cover was also recommended by me and you can see how nice it is that it's on the glass that I can actually get this clean and if I had actually inked directly on my glow tablet I may have ruined it 
So let's see what else we got to talk about. This is some of the threads offered in the kit for the class. We'll be quilting with these. Let's see, this is a thread that I'm testing and I will be letting you know what I feel about it as time goes on. Oh, there's my memory card. These are the little cards that go into the cameras as I film and I was wondering where that was. This is a really handy product to have is it's a temporary adhesive that allows you to place stick and rinse stabilizer onto a piece of paper, which I will be filming in a video this week. And these are the threads that will be used to accentuate the babbling brook. Some more inks that I didn't feel were adequate and in part you had to do a lot of preparation to get them to stay on the fabric. You had to wash your fabric first. These are the needles that I recommend for quilting. Uh, the uh, Schmetz Super Nonstick Needles. Uh, if you don't have these they're fabulous and they are also offered at creativefeet.com. Different sizes of, of painter's tape are I always have this on hand. It helps you work with art. This is part of the instructions that came, that is part of the Babbling Brook course. A lot of documentation is inside of the actual course topics area in the documents folder. These are my favorite clips. These are the actual clips, K-L-I-P. They have little lines on them that make it so that you know when you're a quarter inch away from your edge of your material. And they're easy on your hands as everything we offer at Creative Feet is also ergonomic. So it doesn't use a lot of muscles to use those. Uh, I didn't end up wanting to use that. These are great markers. So if you can pick up some of these, they are wonderful to write on your fabric with and you can wash and it just stays and you don't need to heat set it to make it stay. And they come in more than one size with different tips on them. I like that really fine brush tip. Let's see what else we got. Trusty paper towels. Uh, I like to use up plastic items that you buy at the grocery store. This is one of my favorite things to use for mixing colors of ink when uh, inking fabric. Trusty Ginger scissors. And let's see, my thread dispenser, which keeps your threads organized. It's kind of vacant because I pulled threads off for my last show. But you store your bobbins on top. The thread comes up from here, goes up into this eye hook, and then it goes to the sewing machine. And where is my sewing machine? My sewing machine is not on the table. That's about to change. My poor sewing machine is actually on the floor. This is what I did at a show, some quilting done with the Octi hoops. It's just a square and my dog likes to jump up on boxes with fabric on it so that she can then sit on the pillow. And she is my filming partner in every video, always sitting right by my side. Tink, and there she is. Now you know what's on my table, what's on yours. Tell me in the comments below. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, share with your friends. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, well, I sure hope you'll do so today. If you're ready to take your creativity to the next level, be sure to join create.clairerowley.com where I'm teaching how to do this, the Babbling Brook course and many other classes. Know that I am there in the classroom, ready to help you. We have ways of communicating like never before. I am not just teaching, but I am also there as a support to help encourage you, to give you the tools that you need in order to break through your barriers, these, these limiting beliefs that, that have maybe stopped you from trying things like free motion quilting. And know that you are not alone, that this school is full of people who want to create and maybe just feel like they aren't good enough or you know something's holding them back. It's time to just relax and have fun in, in a really safe environment, separate from other social media sites, but including all of that rich communication that is part of why we like social media so much. So until the next video, I will see you in the classroom.
Bye.